So here's an interesting question. Um, let's take a look at these three kicks, all right, by this, this football player over here. Um, which of the three kicks is in the air for the longest? So in other words, which has the biggest, biggest T? Okay. Now, um, there, the one thing we know is that they're all reaching the same maximum height. Okay. This tells us something. If they're all reaching the maximum height, one thing we know for sure is that the, the VY, right, the Y component of the velocity, remember there's going to be an X and a Y component of velocity. The Y component always must be the same for each of these, right? If the Y component was different for each of these, they would be at different heights, right? So the, the Y component of the velocity is, is what determines the height of these guys, okay? So that's the first thing to think about. Second thing to think about is to, to look at our, our equations, right? Our kinematic equations. And I'm going to start here with this equation, this V2 equals V1 plus AT. And the reason why I'm sticking, starting with this one is because we know something about V2, um, especially in the y direction, right? So we're going to make sure these are all y directions. We know something about v2 because it's maximum height. v2 at the maximum height has to be, v2y specifically, must be zero. Okay? And we know something about the, in, the initial v. Um, actually, w w yes, we know that the initial velocity in the y direction has to be the same for each of these. And we know a has to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, all right, that's ba it's basically just G. Okay, so this means that if this is zero, right, V2Y is zero, V2Y has to be zero for all of these, right? The initial velocity is the same for all of them, but I'm just gonna put V1Y plus GT, right? So in other words, this means that the time up right, is just going to be V1, Y over G, right? And we know that to find the time up and down, you just double that. So the, the total time is really 2 V1, Y over G, right? Okay, obviously, these are all kicked on Earth, right? G has to be the same for all of them. True story? Okay. And we just said that if they all reach the same height, the V1Y component, the initial component in the Y direction, all has to be the same. So what does that say about the Ts? It says all of these must be in the air the same amount of time because G is the same for all of these kicks and V1Y is the same for all of these kicks, okay? So the answer is uh, A equals B equals C in this case, okay? All right, um, tricky question, interesting question. Um, go through it, make sure it makes sense to you. If it doesn't, feel free to check in with me during office hours. Um, so things that aren't discrete objects still follow the rules of projectile motion. So even a stream of water are gonna follow the same rules of projectile motion that all other objects do, okay? Um, well, the reason is, you know, what is a stream of water? Well, it's a whole bunch of tiny little projectiles, right? A whole bunch of tiny little water droplets that, that are all following the same projectile motion at the same time, okay? So um, the question is, uh, a fire hose held near the ground shoots water at a speed of 6.5 meters per second. At what angle should the nozzle point in order that the water lands 2.5 meters away? Okay, what are those two different angles? Sketch the two trajectories. All right, so here's the deal. Here's the deal here. Um, we haven't said specifically, but I will say this, that the, the angle for the farthest range is 45 degrees. Okay, so the angle for the farthest possible range is always 45 degrees. Um, and so it's, it almost looks like this. So if I have a 40, 45 degree angle here, right? And this, 
follow some trajectory, right? That's going to be the farthest possible range that I can have, right? Now, if I do something at like 30, it'll, it'll do this. Okay, and not land farther away, right? So if this, so this would be like a 30 degree angle. But if I did a 60 degree angle, right? Both, you know, 30 is 15 away from 45 and 60 is 15 away from 45. And so this angle and this angle are gonna end up resulting in the same range, right? There's a symmetry there, right? So if we go, if we go the same angle away from 45 and the same angle above 45, they're both going to land at the same spot, okay? And so that is why two different angles can give you the same, the same range. In both cases, it can be 2.5 meters away, all right? We wanna find out what that is, okay? So we go ahead and we do what we, what we always do. We start with the x direction and we go to the y direction and we write down all our variables in x, v1x. You guys gotta be just pros at this by now. Like this has gotta be so simple. You gotta be getting so bored watching me do this every time. Um, I shouldn't even be doing it. You guys should just be doing it, but you know, just for funsies. All right, so v1y, v2y, ay, dy, t, okay? You don't even need me to tell you what to put in here. At this point, you can put these in here. V1x is just gonna be, uh, well, the speed is, that this is being shot at, is 6.5, right? Meters per second. So this is just gonna be 6.5 cosine of theta. This doesn't change, 6.5 cosine theta. This is zero. Dx is 2.5 right? And time, we don't know. Okay. V1y is going to be 6.5 sine of theta. And V2y, remember, they have to be symmetric. So whatever is the y component this way, V1y, this is going to be negative V1y here, all right? So it'll be the negative of 6.5 sine of theta. And of course, a y is just gravity, so it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? And then dy is, well, it starts and it lands in the same position, so that's just zero, okay? All right, so, okay, here's a few things that we know, okay? Um, we know that we're probably going to have to find t in one dimension, okay? And I'm going to try to find t in the y dimension. And so I look at my kinematic equations, v2 equals v1 plus at. And I look over here at v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2ad. And I look at d equals v1t plus one half a t squared, okay? And so I say, all right, which one of these equations could I solve for t? Well, these two I can solve for t, right? Um, but what's easier and far and away the easier one is this guy. This guy's a more simple equation, right? So if I say, um, if I say 6.5 sine theta, and this is going to be, this is V2, right? So that's going to be negative, right? Equals, what's my initial velocity in the y direction? 6.5 sine theta. Um, minus A is 9.8, so minus 9.8 T, right? Okay, if I subtract this over to the other side, I get 13, right? So this becomes negative 13 sine theta, because this is minus, and then I minus another 6.5, so I get minus 13, right? Divided by negative 9.8 t, just to make things 
a little bit easier. I'm just going to, 9.8 is really close to 10. So I'm just going to divide this and, you know, make instead of 13, this is going to be about 1.3. So negative 1.3 sine of theta. Okay, so that's my t, at least in terms of theta, minus 1.3 sine of theta. Minus 1.3 sine of theta it has to be the same in both dimensions, right? Okay, so now, uh, well, actually, sorry, I, there's, there's no minus sign there. You're not going to have negative times, positive, 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 okay? So now we look back at our kinematic equations and say, what is a formula where we can, the easiest formula where we might be able to get at these angles, these thetas, right? And in the x dimension, I keep coming back to it, but I love this equation because a is zero, right? Which makes this very, very simple. Just d equals v1t. So let's do that. I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to say d equals v1t plus 1 half at squared. Again, ax is 0, so that goes away. dx is 2.5, so I can just say that 2.5 equals um, v1t. v1t is 6.5 cosine theta. Okay. And... Um, this is times time, right? And time we said is 1.3 sine theta. Okay, now here's the deal. This is, this is an equation. Okay, and there's some trig identities that we can do. So, so you can just multiply the six, the 1.3 and the 6.5 very easily, right? That's easy, right? So that would... That would leave you with, you know, whatever 6.5 times 1.3 is times cosine theta sine theta. There is an identity that reduces cosine theta sine theta that makes this easier to solve. But we all have graphing calculators and we all have, you know, the equation solvers online. So you can do either one. You can use the trig identity or just use an equation solver online. That's fine. And if you do that, you get two possible angles of 18.1 and 71.8 degrees and you'll notice these are both the same distance away from 45 as I originally mentioned over here okay I want to be clear I will never put something on an exam that will require you to use an equation solver but I do think that it's very important that you get comfortable with being able to put an equation into an, uh, some sort of equation solver like MATLAB or Mathematica, and there's other free online ones. Um, and I think you could probably do it on a TA 82 or 83 as well, okay? So I want you to get comfortable with that. But if you put that in and solve for it, you get these two values, okay? Um, which means that if we want this to go to 2.5 meters, right? If we wanna spray and get to 2.5 meters, either you do it at this angle right or you do which is which would be this this would be 18.1 or you do it at this much higher angle which would be 71.8 degrees but either way it'll land in the same spot okay this one a little more mathematically tricky but you're building your comfort levels you're building your physics muscles okay all right so the finale the, the big old why do we care um, remember, we wanted to find the acceleration on the moon, okay, because uh, they brought this nine iron and we wanted to see, you know, how far it would go. Okay, so, um, man, I wish I was golfing on the moon right now. Okay, be a great place to quarantine. So, so here we go. We're going to do the same thing we always do, okay? We're going to say, well, let me read the problem first. As we mentioned earlier, the Apollo astronauts took a nine iron to the moon and hit a golf ball, a maximum, a maximum range of 180 meters. Assuming that the swing, launch angle, and so on were the same as on Earth, where the same astronaut could hit it only 32 meters, let's estimate the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the moon, okay? Okay, 
So here, so in this case, we got to start out with Earth, okay? Because if it's the same conditions on is on Earth, we need to know what is the velocity that that guy was able to actually hit it at, okay, on Earth. With what velocity did they hit it at? Because in order to solve the problem on the moon, right, we're going to need to know how hard he's actually hitting it, okay? Um, so let's say on the Earth, we have an x and a y direction again, okay? X direction is v1x, v2x, ax, dx, t, and of course, v1y, v2y, ay, dy, t. Okay, so v1x is going to be, um, so this is maximum range. So that automatically tells us that we're dealing with 45 degrees, right? So this is going to be whatever that v is, cos of 45 degrees, okay? Again, this has got to be the same, no acceleration. This is going to be zero. And the range on the Earth was 32 meters, right? Cool, 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 cool. All right. We don't know the time. We might need to know the time. We'll see. The uh, initial velocity in the y direction, guys, is going to be v sine of 45. Okay. Um, we also know that sine of 45 and cosine of 45 is the same value. It's honestly point. It's it's just 0.71. Sine of 45 is 0.71 v. This is also going to be 0.71 v. Okay. Um, now, remember, after one full arc, this will be negative v1y, which will be negative 0.71 v. This is, of course, gravity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. And... If it goes up and down, lands at the same height, this is just zero here, okay? So, as per usual, let's find t first, okay? I'm gonna use the classic. I'm skipping a few steps here um, for the sake of time and because it gives you guys an opportunity to, to you know, practice on your own um, and fill in some of the gaps. But I'm gonna use this equation and I'm gonna get that, just like I did in, several, in the last several problems, I'm gonna get that seven, negative seven V here, negative 0.7 V equals 0.71 V minus 9.8 T. Okay. So I'm going to get that negative 9.8 T equals subtract this over to the other side. This doubles, right? And I get 1.42 V, okay? Divide by negative 9.8. There's a negative sign there too. Divide by negative 9.8. And I get T equals 0.144 V, okay? So T again is going to be 0.144 V, 0.144 V, okay? And like we've done several times now, I'm just going to go ahead and take my, see what is the best place to do this. I'm going to switch to a, a bolder color and just write over, over the moon here. Okay. And I'm going to go to my X dimension. I'm going to say D equals V1 T plus one half AT squared. Again, I like to start here because AX these are all x dimensions, x dimensions, x dimensions. Ax is zero, so this just goes away, right? Which means that I can just say 32 must equal v1x, right? Which we just said over here is 0.71v. So this is 0.71v times t, which is 0.144v. right? Multiply 0.71 and 0.144 and multiply the two Vs. 
I get 32 equals about 0.1 v squared. And when I solve for v, after that, I get 17.8 meters per second. Now, this helps us a lot when we're doing the moon because now we know exactly how hard the astronaut is going to hit it on the moon. Okay, so we do the same example x and y's, we know that v1x equals something, v2x equals something, v3x equals something. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Got in a roll there. Okay, a, ax equals something, which we know that something's always zero. Uh, dx equals something, and t equals something. Then we know that v one y equals something v two y equals something a y equals something d y and t okay uh this my friends is just going to be the initial velocity that we just found 17.8 right so this is 17.8 cosine of 45 because it's maximum range again right so we're, we're working with the maximum range this is cosine of 45. This is easy to calculate. Okay. Just put that in the calculator. I get 12.7 meters per second. So the velocity in the x direction is always 12.7 meters per second. Okay. And my distance in the x direction. Well, the maximum range on the moon, it says is 180. So I put 180 here. Okay. So that's all my stuff for x dimension. Y, well, it's going to be 17.8 sine 45 for the y component, right? That's the same exact value. So this is going to be also uh, 12.7, right? And the, the range is, if I go the whole way, is going to be negative 12.7. A is that's exactly what we're looking for. We're trying to find the acceleration due to gravity. What is G on the moon, right? And then dy is gonna be zero, okay? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna do the same exact thing that I did before, except now I'm gonna find T in the X direction, the X dimension, so that I can put it over here and so that I can hopefully use it to solve for A, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start by um, just erasing all this. So that I have some more room. Okay. And so I'm going to start by saying I'm going to use my classic x equation that I love, that we end up using a lot. So d equals v1t plus 1 half at squared. Why do we use this equation again? Because a is 0 in the x dimension, and it makes it much easier, right? So then I know that dx is 180. Uh, v1 is 12.7. And that makes solving for the time that the ball is in the air so, so easy. Um, so on the moon, the ball is in the air 14.1 seconds. Just imagine that. Imagine a hang time of 14.1 seconds anywhere, right? That's a really cool thing about being on the moon. So that means that this is 14.1 seconds here, 14.1 seconds here, okay? Now, I'm gonna erase this again. What equation could I use, hmm, a little more racy. What equation could I use uh, in order to solve for A? Well, um, you know, we have basically everything. So why don't we just use the, the easiest one, which is V, um, v2 equals v1 plus at. 
right? We know that V2 is going to be negative 12.7 meters per second. You know, we have it right over here. This over here is going to be 12.7 plus G on the moon, gravity on the moon, times 14.1. Okay, again, we bring this over to the other side. Okay, divide by 14.1. And this time, I get a G on the moon of negative 1.8 meters per second squared. And that, you can check anywhere online, is the actual gravity of the moon. It's about one-sixth the gravity of Earth. Okay, so on the moon, gravity is only 1.8 meters per second squared. That's why we can jump higher, jump farther, um, hit golf balls farther and yeah that's it i promised you you'd be able to solve this problem by the end and you did um this is just what we did in the one dimensional kinematics chapter but doubled you're just doubling up everything okay um because you're doing it in the x and the y direction um if you have any questions about this again as i always say please come to office hours I'm, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to, to help clarify things. But more than anything, I encourage you, practice, 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 practice. These problems are the sort of things where they start to make sense over time. After you do enough, you get an intuition. Like, for example, you notice that I started picking the equations that I wanted to use without even looking at my equation list. And that's because... I've developed a sixth sense almost for these problems, right? I don't have to look at the list anymore because I, I kind of have a sense of how they work, okay? So do as many as you can get your hands on. Start out with the easy ones, get a little bit harder, and I promise these will start to be, get easier over time, okay? Um, yeah, looking forward to diving into this more with you uh, in person. Talk to you later.